maybe this book is just one big nightmare. Welcome to Books and Banter, a podcast about books. I'm Janine, a library clerk. And I'm Jess, a branch admin. And we both work at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We read the first half of the book and predict where it might be going, and then finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark, there will be spoilers, and depending on the book, there may be references to violent sex and other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. Today I'm joined by Brittany. They work at the Winkler branch with me. Welcome, Brittany. Hello. Um, And Jess is mysteriously not here. Weird. Do you know where she is? Uh, No idea. She's not here. Um, Today we're going to be talking about the book Murder Your Employer, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide by Rupert Holmes. Who hasn't wondered for a split second what the world would be like if a person who is the object of your affliction ceased to exist? But then you've probably never heard of the McMaster's Conservatory, dedicated to the consummate execution of the homicidal arts. To gain admission, a student must have an ethical reason for erasing someone who deeply deserves a fate no worse, nor better, than death. The campus of this Poison Ivy League college, its location unknown to even those who study there, is where you might find yourself the practice target of a classmate, and where one's mandatory graduation thesis is getting away with the perfect murder of someone whose death will make the world a much better place to live. (laughs) Prepare for an education you'll never forget, a fiendishly funny mix of witty wordplay, breathtaking twists, and genuine intrigue. Murder Your Employer will gain your admission into a wholly original world, cocooned within the most entertaining book about well-intentioned, would-be murderers you'll ever read. So this book was published this year, February 21st, 2023. And according to his website, this is, according to the author's website, this is the first book in a new series. And this is Holmes's third book. David Goldstein, better known as Rupert Holmes, is a British-American composer, singer-songwriter, dramatist, and author. Rupert Holmes is the first person in theatrical history to solely win Tony Awards as an author, composer, and lyricist. His second novel, Swing, reached number 24 among all books on Amazon and was the first novel to come with an original CD musical score. So there you go. Some interesting facts about the author. Impressive. Yeah, I know. I was kind of like, well, that's kind of a lot. Singer, songwriter, composer. (laughs) When I first Googled him, it came up that he was like a singer. And I was like, this can't be the same guy. (laughs) Because it's not a biography, I don't think. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe he's speaking from experience. (laughs) So yeah, first off, we usually discuss the cover of the book. So any thoughts on the cover? Did it give you a good impression of what you were going to read? Or what do you think? Yeah, I think it's gorgeous. It's like Because it kind of portrays like a, an elegant classy school mm-hmm. so the front it, with the that gold edging and everything mm-hmm. I thought it was like yeah that's what I would expect yeah <laughs> it's very like to me I would say gothic looking yeah kind of so yeah I don't know it looks very nice yeah. and it's a say volume one so I'm not sure how many guides how many more things <laughs> there will be about murdering your employer in here but how uh, yeah, much there is to you we'll see <laughs> Um, do you have any first impressions? What are your thoughts? Oh, I just, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, right? Like, I was surprised, actually, at how funny it was. Right? I was, like, literally dropping my jaw. <laughs> I know. It was, like, it's all these adults kind of running around the school willy-nilly, trying to pretend to kill each other <laughs> for practice because they want to go out in the world and kill somebody. Yeah. You know? And, like, it's just... <laughs> A sport. It's just like a regular day. Just like set up like every other university would be. Yeah, (laughs) I know. But it's so weird, like, that that's the main goal and purpose of the school is to, like, teach you how to kill. Yeah. And, like, all the different classes that they learn, like, poisons and disguises and all of that. But I guess if that's something you're doing, you might want to learn to do it well. (laughs) I know, right? So the sort of, like, they're sort of following three students, but the main one is Cliff Iverson. Mm -hmm. And he already has attempted to kill his boss and did not succeed. Mm. And uh, he was brought into the school. um, He had a benefactor, so like a kind of on a scholarship basis kind of thing, I think. And so he didn't, he had no idea. Nobody knows about the school. Nobody Mm. knows. Nobody who's there knows where they are except the faculty, I believe. And so um, he tried to escape (laughs) very unsuccessfully. (laughs) 
I was literally sitting on the edge of like my seat when I was reading the part. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. And they're just, they seem to be like really good at the deception, the mm-hmm. art of deception, right? Yeah. I don't know if you found that too, but. I did, yep. Yeah. So this guy comes along with his like fake ice cream truck and it's like, yeah, I'm trying to escape too. And then like basically <laughs> delivers him to the professor. <laughs> right. And I, w- I totally believed him. I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be great. I know. They're going to get away. <laughs> How are they going to get him back? Because obviously he has to stay in the book, right? Yeah. Because he's the main character. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really the part. So I marked one part in my book because I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. They were having a meal and uh, the dean of the school says, let us bow our heads in a moment of reflection. Um, <laughs> and then he goes, I, the student goes, I thought it bizarre that a school with McMaster's intent would say grace, but all lowered their heads, many folding their hands as Harrow intoned. Heavenly Father, who gave life to all creatures on this earth, and then thought it would be just as good an idea to give us death. Thank you for the bounty we are about to receive, and also for the bounty which is not on our heads. (laughs) Give us this day our daily bread, and may I just say how delicious the brioche was today. My compliments to our baker as well as to our maker, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us once we've deleted them. (laughs) And may all of us soon be saying amen at the funeral of our targets. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) And I heard that and I was like... (laughs) But, like... I mean, they're very serious about it in a very comical way. Yeah. Do you find that? Yeah, I was just like, this... What? (laughs) I know. I know. I... Yeah. It's... Yeah. (laughs) I, uh... When I first saw this book, when... Uh, Jess first showed it to me, which was her first mistake. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, that looks like a good book. But I had no idea mm-hmm. what was what was going to be in there. Me either. I took it out of the spinal spin and I looked and I was like, that's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And once I really got into it, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I was expecting something very serious and like... Yeah. Like they're gonna be very serious about their their murder, but they're like it seems it's very lighthearted considering yeah. the subject matter. It's like it's very lighthearted, but at the same time, because it's so lighthearted, it's almost like so cutthroat. You're like, oh wow, <laughs> I know. Okay, <laughs> they're joking about that. Yeah, I know. You're right, and the students are kind of cutthroat. Like yeah. they're kind of after each other all the time. Yeah, you know, and like. I don't think that their intent is ever to actually murder, mm-hmm. but I think when they have an excess, uh, successful, a successful attack mm-hmm. on another student, they get extra points, whatever those points are. Yeah. So, yeah, there's always that goal to, like, sneak up on somebody and get them. <laughs> That'd suck, always having to, like... You're always watching your watching back, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. You know. And for however many semesters, because they were talking about, this is, like, you're not just going for mm-hmm. a course. Like, this is... Yeah. <laughs> And years. <laughs> they kind of decide when you're ready to graduate. Mm-hmm. And then they just, they kind of sneak you out the way they snuck you in. And nobody knows. You're just suddenly gone, right? Yeah. And then you're when you're ready to complete your thesis, which is your murder that you've been preparing for. <laughs> your thesis. <laughs> and, like, it's funny because, like, they accept students based on, they have to say, kind of say their intent, right? Like, mm-hmm. who they want to kill and why. And there's all these conditions that have to be met. Yeah. So it's not like they're just killing people off willy-nilly because they're upset at them or, like, you know, they have to give yeah. a good reason. Yeah, they're, like, justifying it. Yeah, yeah. which I th- also thought was really interesting because there's rules. Will yeah. other people benefit from it or is this going to harm other people? Or... Yeah, is there something else you could do? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so I was like, well, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Not that I ever think murder is justifiable, really. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. Other yeah. thoughts? Other favorite parts? I mean, sometimes I think, is murder justifiable? <laughs> <laughs> there was, the, so the when they were describing some of the uh, the reasons they were going after these people, mm-hmm. I was just like, oh my, yeah, holy moly. Like, yeah, that's just people true. suck. <laughs> like, it's, this guy's boss was a real jerk. Yeah. He like, really was. Hopefully, maybe not justifiable <laughs> for that, but holy. I know. I know. It's very interesting to think about, like, what does it take to some for somebody to get to that point where they right? f- feel like they're going to kill somebody, right? Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever had that emotion in no. me, so deep of an emotion of anger or whatever it is. Yeah. I like um, to watch a lot of true crime, so mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's definitely, like, I see a lot of, it's anger or just kind of a large emotion, generally. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I know. I like true crime also. Mm-hmm. And uh, the thing, I think the thing that appeals to me is the psychological part of it. Like, yeah. why somebody did that, what drove them to that, and uh, right. figuring out, like, yeah, the why behind it all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's... Uh, in some ways, I feel like they're a little bit cavalier about murder <laughs> yeah. in this book. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, yeah, like, whatever, we're just going to train you. We have all these courses. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, You'll be the best at this when we're done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. We're definitely, uh, definitely going to teach you. <laughs> teach you some skills. <laughs> but... But the thing is, too, like, they don't believe in, like, killing animals and, like, innocent people and things like that. So they're training them to kill a specific person. But I wonder yeah, what happens. You kill once. Aren't you that much more likely to do it again? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, would you? Or would you just be like, I did it once, got away with it, never do it again. Mm-hmm. Like, keep that to myself forever. I know. I don't know if I could keep that a secret. I'm too, no, that like, would be, that would, like eat me alive it would like stay awake all night i know i'm too emotional for that like yeah i feel emotional when i hurt somebody's feelings you know like it bothers me yeah so to actually think about killing somebody would be like i i couldn't <laughs> we would not do well at this school no we wouldn't. <laughs> i don't think we would get accepted no to be honest yeah. <laughs> so yeah um <laughs> i don't know but i'm kind of excited though <laughs> it's just very uh, humorous way of coming to it. <laughs> I know. And it's not what I was like from even from the cover. The cover doesn't look like it's a humorous book at all. No. No. No, I was kind of worried. I was like, am I going to be able to get through this or mm-hmm. is it just going to be like really boring? Mm hmm. No, I know. Not it's at all. Not boring. <laughs> not and at all. Like, so I read, was it reading the introduction, I think, mm-hmm. that was written by the dean. And I was like, okay, this is a lot of big words in here. This guy talks like a dean. Is this how the whole book's going to be? Because it's going to be a, a struggle. And mm-hmm. it wasn't that way at all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that it so, was not like that. Because yeah. I was like, um. <laughs> yeah. No. So, yeah, there are four rules, I guess. Is this murder necessary? Mm-hmm. Have you given your target every last chance to redeem themselves? <laughs> what innocent person might suffer by your actions? Will this deletion improve the life of others? So they use the word deletion instead of murder yeah. also, which I think is sort of like, yeah, if you call it deleting, it doesn't sound quite as bad, right? Yeah. Did you find that too? Yeah, it was like they're almost speaking as if, as if anything's on record, it mm-hmm. could be taken some other way. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like they have all their terms, which make it sound much better. Like you're not a murderer, you are a deletist. <laughs> so, so professional. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, or executor. Executor? Executor. Executor. Yeah. Which makes me think of wills, but... Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I I don't know. It's, it sort of makes it, like, seem a little bit easier, right? If I'm, if I'm going to delete somebody... That doesn't it sound... It doesn't sound as yeah. bad as if I'm going to murder <laughs> of course. somebody, right? The connotations <laughs> of that word. They're like, we're going to do this the ethical way. Yeah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> We're going to follow our rules, and then it's going to be all good. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the students has actually already killed somebody. Yes. And now she has to kill somebody else because she's being blackmailed right. over that first murder. That, and I was so, like, <clears throat> oh, well, okay, so now yeah. spiraling into that thought, once you've done it, mm-hmm. now are you just going to keep going? Right. And so then if, if your second one also doesn't go according to plan, then what? Is there going to be yeah. a third victim and a fourth? And and then you just... When does it end? Yeah, you're just a full-blown serial killer <laughs> at that <know>. point. <laughs> so, I don't think the goal of the school is serial killer maker, but... I hope... I yeah. mean, I hope not. No. That would be crazy. <laughs> it would be. What a plot twist, though. I mean, what would be a plot twist? <laughs> yeah, speaking of plot twists, do you... Like, what do you think is going to happen in the second half? Um... I think I would really like to find out who the sponsor is. Yes, I know. I was trying like, to figure it out. Because who would send someone really to do that mm-hmm. if you did not also want that same person to right. be deleted? Right. Did you have? Do you have any guesses? Kind of. There. Okay. Um. Oh, what was her name? There was a, a person that was higher up kind of more money um, that worked alongside Cliff. Mm, okay. And I think maybe she was like, yeah, let's get this guy out of here. 
Okay. And just anonymously. But then again, would that mean that she knows too much? And Right. But they, like, obviously the school would have approved that, right? Right. Because, yeah, yeah, their other thing is you don't need, like, don't have an alibi, Mm -hmm. but the alibi can't actually know, like... Anything about it. Yeah. So your alibi has to be, like, when this person was killed, you were, like, in another country or something. Yeah, have an alibi, but don't have an associate. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious to figure out how they actually make that work. Like, this person was killed in New York Mm -hmm. at 12 a.m., and at that time I was in London. Yeah. Doing stuff. You, You can't be in two places at once. No. Right? So how does that... Right, you'd that part confused me. A lot of planning, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody was like, is it a stunt double? And I'm like, no. No, that's, that's silly. That's not, that's the same thing as like telling somebody. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know. But yeah, it's, uh, I am also curious, or I hope, well, do I hope? <laughs> like, do I want him to be successful or do I not want him to be, like, do you know what I mean? I guess so, because <laughs> when they described the boss, I was just like, yeah, he's a jerk. Oh my- Gosh. <laughs> Yikes. Like, just... He, he maybe deserves to be deleted. <laughs> maybe deleted from his position of, of work. Yes. <laughs> I know. Life. But, oh. I know. But at the same time, if he's successful, that means he's a murderer. Yeah. And then he has to live with that. But if he is successful, that means he's gone through all of the ethical ways. Right. Like, True. the questions that, uh, is this necessary? You're right. That's a good point. So <laughs> he's clearly, it's well thought out, right? Mm-hmm. I thought too, it was funny how like Cliff was so resistant when he first got there that like, he tried to like run away. Yeah. But then within like a week, he was like full in. I'm like, I'm going to do this and yeah. I'm committed. And that almost boggled my mind a bit because <laughs> I was like in the brain of him being like, okay, hey, we're not, we're not into being here. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it was just like, no, we're, we're doing this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it was just like a, like a, quick turnaround from yeah. one emotion to the next and I was like hmm interesting yeah so and also how many like faculty were hidden amongst the students like at the end of the second half there was two people who we thought were students mm-hmm. that turned out to be like faculty or like working towards right. faculty and yeah like, so there was already a few like shocks or twists or whatever so I'm also hoping for like a really big twist at the end Mm -hmm. so maybe something with like his sponsor or whatever I don't know I wonder if it's um like he had that girl Cora who he was interested in oh that he really yeah Uh, she committed suicide I think I wonder if it's like a family member of hers or something yeah and she like knew too much maybe ooh I don't know or his co-worker was his name Jack Jack Horvath or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, but he was also killed. Oh, yeah, no, no. So yeah, it can't be him. But maybe, like, a family member or, or it must be another employee. Or, I don't know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Who would fund that? <laughs> That's the other thing. Like, I don't want to get my hands dirty, so mm-hmm. I'm going to pay for you to go and learn this skill so right? you can take care of and it. And it doesn't sound like it's just, like, some community college either. It sounds no. like it's a really high class. Mm-hmm. So, like, tuition must be quite expensive (laughs) yes i would think so and like there's some drawings throughout the book of like this school grounds and stuff and Mm -hmm. it's all like really pretty i'm so glad they included that too yeah i know i like that too it's nice to be able to like visualize it yeah and like i don't know i just like "Mm, i might like to go there that looks kind of fun (laughs) right (laughs) i don't know why not (laughs) i mean not for that purpose but (laughs) yeah and like all the sports like it's an actual school yeah it's just And it's, like, there's scheduled, like, the actual, like, they have the schedules in there, too. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's laid out like a normal school day would be, a normal. Mm -hmm. And they have to, like, dress for dinner and stuff, too, which I thought was, like, this is a fancy place. Yeah. So, I guess only the rich people can learn how to efficiently (laughs) delete somebody. (laughs) I guess they did say that tuition (laughs) is sometimes dependent on... It's based on your income, right? Yeah. Is that what they were saying? Because there is... I think there was one place that there's, uh, it's lower income where a bunch of people stay rather right. than... Right, you're but, right. Now that you mentioned that, I remember. Yeah. And I think one of the characters is... Yeah, Gemma. Gemma, I think yeah. She has to share her room with other girls. Mm-hmm. And Cliff has his own room, but he shares a bathroom. Yeah. And then um, the other woman who has two names, Dulcie. Dulcie, yes. She has her own little cottage. Yeah. Because she's a movie star. 
<laughs> must. So, she must, <laughs> must have her own place. I thought it was kind of funny that as the movie star, she was also the person who was like a stunt double. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, of course you'd say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, right? <laughs> but, yeah, I, like... I'm a little more interested in finding out more about the two girls, like Gemma and Dulcie. Yeah. And I feel like their stories need to be explored a little more. Yeah, I'm glad that it's also exploring their stories, because mm-hmm. Cliffs is interesting. Yeah. But to see how they all tie together would I be... know. Yeah. So I'm wondering, though, in the second half, is it going to just focus on Cliff, or are we going to go back and forth mm-hmm. now? Because Cliff is graduating. That's how the second half ended. Yeah. Uh, or not the second half, the, the first, first half. half. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> um... So it ended with his graduation. Mm -hmm. Um, So he's getting out into the world. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Oh, I wonder if we're going to get to see the the deletion. I know. (laughs) I know. I honestly have no idea where he's going to go from here. Right? (laughs) To be honest. (laughs) It's it's such, it's like written in a way that you literally could not. No. Guess. It's, I mean, you can guess, but. You could try, but. You could be like, yeah. Like I wouldn't have. So when he tried to escape, I would have never have thought that the ice cream truck, like, that guy was in on it. Yeah. You know, like, I honestly believed he was trying to escape, too, because he was right? like, oh, I'm just not doing so good here, and I keep screwing up, and they're giving me a hard time, and yeah. yada, yada, yada. And so then I was like, oh, yeah, he's... I was there on right the there with him. Yeah. I was like, he's got to go, because he yeah. doesn't want to die. <laughs> and then the, the professor's coming behind on his motorbike, and I'm like, get away. And, right. Well, there's a hospital here. Oh, good. You know? And Nope. Hospital is for training purposes. Oh, my goodness. And, it was, like, almost like a nightmare. I know. It was like, help, help. And then it's like, <laughs> just kidding. Remove the mask. We're all here. <laughs> I know. That is a bad nightmare. Right? Just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this book is just one big nightmare. <gasps> just, in the end, just wake up, and it was all just It's all just a dream. <laughs> Could you imagine? That would be the worst ending. I'd be so upset. I think I would be too if that (laughs) that was the ending. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Also, like, the front, like, the end papers are, it's a map of the campus. Yeah, that's also helpful. And it's very extensive. Mm -hmm. Like, it looks huge from here anyways. Right? So does that mean that there's, like, the fencing literally around this entire... Mm -hmm. Wow. And because they were saying when he was trying to escape, he said, like, he felt like he was just going, turning left, like, the entire time, right? Like, he was just on that a gradual curve. Yeah. And he didn't realize it at the time until after he knew that there was, like, the path just goes all the way around. Yeah. So I don't know how they get really in or out. And I also, I really hope that at the end we find out exactly where this is. Oh, <gasps> yeah. You know? I like that he was trying to, like... He's, like, kind of curious, trying to find places. Yeah, let me go to the edge, see what I can see here, and how, like, he was up. You see on the map here, he Mm -hmm. was here, which is kind of close to the border, Mm -hmm. but not as close as you would think. But, I mean, or, like, I was wondering if that part was outside of the border. Right. But it actually is. It looks like I think this is where they were. Yeah. At the last part. Yeah. So, um, Yeah. I don't know. It would, I think, I'm guessing it's like, I wonder if I'm guessing that it's European simply because they are, like, it's a European type. They're English, mm-hmm. there's French and everything. Yeah. But I feel like that would be just too easy. That's, but that was sort of my thought also, right? Yeah. And it has to be somewhere where there's seasons because the seasons are changing. Like, there yeah. was snow at Christmas time. Exactly. And so, like, it's obviously got to be, like, North America or, or Europe or something like that. Yeah, something kind of... Not super close to the equator, but Mm -hmm. not super close to either of the Arctics. Yeah, I know. So, and I believe, oh, maybe I'm wrong. And if it's Chris, if there's snow at Christmas time, it's on this side. Like, it wouldn't be because Australia, over Mm -hmm. on that side of the world, Christmas doesn't have snow. Yep. And I want to say that the author is British or something. Yeah. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah, I know. British American. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, it could be either. Because, too, when you travel, like, they kind of knock you out when they bring you. Yeah. So you have no... Zero idea. No idea how much time has passed. And yet somehow he figures out the day when he gets there. Like, he knows the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Unless you're looking at where the sun... But even then, if you're looking at where the sun's setting, you'd have to know your time zone Mm -hmm. to guess that. Right. So, Hmm. I know. This author has mastered the art of subterfuge. <laughs> no, I don't know. 
I will say, because I didn't have a lot of time to read it until last night, so I read like three quarters of what we had to read mm-hmm. last night. Mm-hmm. And I will say that that was a lot in one like oh, sitting or whatever. Absolutely. Like I would have liked to have read it over a couple of days mm-hmm. as opposed to like I had I was 50 pages in when I started last night. So I basically read about 150 pages yesterday. Yeah. Cool. And then, by the end of the night, I was, oh, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff to take in. And what a subject to take <laughs> in too. And the way that they're making you take it in a comical. You're yes. Just like, okay. <laughs> I know. Oh, I guess it's it's okay to kill somebody if I if I don't really like them. They yeah. screwed me over at work or something. Yeah. If you didn't like them, no one else really <laughs> likes them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Have you had bad bosses ever like that? you have felt this way about i mean not <laughs> this way but i definitely have had bad bosses where yeah. i was like bye i'm leaving yeah i'm the type of person where um i would much rat like of course money matters mm-hmm. but i want to make sure that i feel valued and appreciated yeah. at my job and i feel good about being here mm-hmm. which is great about this job um but i have had jobs in the past where it was like i'm not mm-hmm. being valued people are just kind of yeah really mean <laughs> Or there's no support from your boss. Like, no. you go to your boss with a problem and they just kind of like, oh, shrug whatever. it off. Yeah. Yeah. That, I've had some crappy bosses also. Mm-hmm. With my uh, with my back issue, I have before been like, I really need to go home and just lay down. And mm-hmm. um, with my medication, that kind of requires me not to be driving, mm-hmm. number one, mm-hmm. or anything. So, yeah. obviously, I'd like to be at home. It just makes it, it they made you feel like you were faking at some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's something you can't, it's not a physical thing, right? No. Like if you have a cold and you're coughing or, or you're throwing up or something, that's, you can, it's very obvious yeah. that that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I've had some good bosses too, for sure, but mm-hmm. I've also had some stickers. <laughs> what was your worst one, you think? Oh, well, it's tough to say. <laughs> <laughs> had a boss once though on the flip side who had a lot of like really well connected friends mm-hmm. um so like it was in the city mm-hmm. and it was in the tuxedo area which if you don't know is a very like rich it's, area yeah, very in nice. the city um and so my boss was very well off and had a lot of very well off friends so he would like he had some drug rep friends he would call them up and be like hey can you bring us some starbucks and they would just come and bring starbucks for all the staff right nice they would like take our orders and like bring us Ooh. bring us stuff and like all these things and he knew somebody who worked for Ticketmaster, so he could get his tickets like concert tickets sometimes not always but but that's, that's awesome yeah so like things like that was he like the best at managing his staff? No. <laughs> but when I think about him, I think about like all of those things and I don't think about like, yeah, some of the decisions you made and some of the ways you mm-hmm. handled your staff was kind of crappy. And you know, that's but, almost like, that's almost more important of how you handle, I think. And just because yeah. I've never really been in the position of, uh, I'm the boss. Yeah. But for me, what makes a good boss is someone who cares, like legitimately cares mm-hmm. about you. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think like ultimately if you had a major problem, he would. Mm-hmm. He would be okay, but like he was also very good at. It was a lot of females who worked there, plus mm-hmm. him. Like I think most of the rest of the staff was female okay. in the pharmacy, so he was really good at like pitting us against each other sometimes. Oh and, like, yeah, you know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, this that's, weird energy, <laughs> and it was a lot of like there was a lot of like cattiness mm-hmm. among some of the staff. Anyways, I still don't think. That I've ever wanted to really kill something. Oh, yeah. Like any of my That probably still didn't justify. No. <laughs> Maybe one time. I once got fired without any reasons. Well, there was reasons given, but they were, like, after the fact. Like, I'm firing you, and here's why. But I never discussed any of these reasons with you until now. Yeah. So I didn't have an opportunity to fix any of my mistakes, right? And the mistakes that they were were, like, stupid things. Like, not, in my opinion, not worth firing. Yeah. Um, and when I talked to other people about it, they were like, well, that's not, that's not right either. Yeah. Um, and so that was pretty upsetting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I still like, if I have to see that person, which doesn't happen, but occasionally because she is in the area, I just, if I see a picture of her, like in the newspaper or something, Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it just gets my blood boiling a little bit, (laughs) but I'm not going to go and kill her. Yeah. (laughs) That would be wrong. <laughs> My mama taught me that murder was wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, do you have any other uh, thoughts or things you want to share about the book before we wrap it up? No, no, I yeah. think we've 
kind of covered all of it. Covered, and we talked about what we think might happen, I think, mm-hmm. a little. And so my biggest things are, like, who is this guy's sponsor? Right. And, like, is he going to successfully delete his this boss? Guy. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of curious also to find more about, like, if they're going to dive into more about his boss. Because, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, could I hate this guy anymore? <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. He's already done a lot of really sketchy, like, yeah, you know, things that make you not like him. Mm-hmm. All right. On that note, we will see you next time. And we are back with part two of Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes. And I'm joined once again by my lovely co-worker, Brittany. Hello. And Jess, well, Jess still isn't here. Weird. Hmm. Yeah, don't know. Don't know where she went. Don't know what happened there. Yeah. Anyway, let's get on with part two, shall we? Okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts? I assume you have thoughts. Yeah, it was a little hard to get through at the big, like, the first half of the second half, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. But once we got started, like started getting into the action, I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, this is." This I is agree. Good. <laughs> I felt that I felt like there was a lot of parts in the second half that were very slow. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I agree with that for sure, and very detailed. Mm-hmm. So much detail, and it was. I thought it was interesting because, um, like, to carry out these murders. So many, like, there were so many moving parts, and everything had to happen, like, at the right time yeah. and at the right, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Everything had to go right. Exactly. In order. Yeah. yeah. And so I get why there was so much detail, because you kind of needed that to see how everything worked out properly. Mm-hmm. But it was just a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. I definitely enjoyed the first half of the book more than the second half. Yeah. The way they jumped around, too, from story to story was, it was kind of difficult to keep up. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, now we're jumping back to this character, that character. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that, too. And sometimes, because it started off with, like, a random person's name or something, then mm-hmm. I was like, where are we again? <laughs> Who are we talking about? Yeah, you had to think of their backstory quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, so essentially, all three of the main characters... Um, were released to complete their thesis Mm -hmm. and so yeah I like I was very interested uh or I found it very interesting how it all ended Mm -hmm. with how everything came about for all the characters right I don't know are we allowed to spoil some or no yeah no no we spoil all the time we there's a warning at the beginning oh okay yeah yeah go right ahead (laughs) um spoil away (laughs) I was incredibly impressed with Cliff specifically because he was like I just have to go on the chance that this guy hates me enough that he's mm-hmm. gonna poison me for like he's just gonna yeah. let poison me first yep that was incredible <laughs> I know it really was and uh yeah like but but also he wasn't I wasn't afraid to die himself right yeah so he was like I'm gonna take this chance and hope that I'm right and if I'm wrong well then I guess I'm dead too yeah right so I thought wow that's quit the thing but I guess like the girl that he liked died and Mm -hmm. his best friend co-worker had died so he didn't have a lot of people no in his life I don't I don't know and he wanted that other lady to get off scotch free you know Mm -hmm. he's kind of like a good guy you know a good bad guy a good bad guy (laughs) he's a good guy yeah (laughs) like and I think I wouldn't see him ever killing again no I wouldn't think but I I mean I guess you never know it's just it's such an odd thing to be talking about. Do you find that like? Oh yeah. Because they're like intentionally making these plans. Like there's a whole school to yeah. teach you how to murder people, and I just it just feels weird. It does. It kind of gets you into like that sinister mindset of yeah. being like, I guess these are good things to think of. <laughs> yeah. The rules of is this necessary? Is this going to harm somebody else? Yeah. So. I know, but like. <laughs> Am I actually ever going to kill somebody? Probably no, not. No. I don't think. But, like... <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. It just... Sometimes it was like, oh, this is... Like, this is... I was saying to Linda the other day how this is different than any other book I've ever read. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's a completely different concept. It's just the way it's told also. I don't know. It's just so different. It is. The way it's written is, like comically casually talking about death and you're just like I I don't that's not an everyday thing (laughs) no and like at the school they kind of joke about it like it is not a big deal it's an everyday thing and I guess you have to do it that way in order to be able to do that maybe I don't know um but I I guess so (laughs) like how else or will Mm -hmm. you be okay with it if you I don't know I guess if they were to take it any other way at the school though would any student take them seriously 
yeah I don't know it's uh but yeah it's a wild a wild <laughs> thing and uh yeah I I just like I don't know that I would say that this was a, fa- a favorite book like I enjoyed it mm-hmm. and it was very different which I liked mm-hmm. because I like books that are not the same right yeah um so I did like that um I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say it was my favorite book of the year or ever mm-hmm. um but but definitely good I can agree with that. It's yeah. not like my favorite, but it was a good read. Mm-hmm. It kept me on the edge of my seat. Yeah. It, well, there was certain parts that I yeah. was like, can we <laughs> let's go? Get, let's get through this <laughs> a little faster. But I also enjoyed um, Gemma's storyline. Yes. That one surprised me because, like, she did not have a good plan for how she was going to no. take out that other woman. To be honest, I didn't think she was going to follow through with it. Yeah. I thought she was going to chicken out and just, like, let Gemma run her life for the rest of forever. Yeah. But, but yeah, and then she found out she was pregnant and they, she protected her. Like yeah. Like, she had everything all set up and ready to go and then... And in the split of a second was just, like, gone. Yeah. No problem, even though know. Adele's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was so crazy. And I loved the fact that they offered her a job. Yes. You know? I just thought, yeah, that's that's good. That ended mm-hmm. up the way it should. I was a little nervous that she was going to fail. Yeah. Um, But they were like, no, you thought of... Yeah. The exact things that we were supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And like that's the thing too, right? If you fail, you you get yeah killed also. So you have to be careful of failure is not really an option if you want to yeah. survive. Yeah, failure isn't an option at so, this school. <laughs> no. So yeah, but um, I I liked the way her story ended up because mm-hmm. I I too felt very uncomfortable with that her whole situation. Yeah. I don't know why, but but yeah. And I was so happy that she got to see Cliff at the end again. I know. I know. I like that, too. I was like, oh, that's that's so good. I think they need each other. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, you didn't really care for... Um, I'm trying to look up her name here real quick. Cause uh, I Doria May. Doria? Yeah. Yes. I did not care for her part of the story so much. No, I thought that the way that she did the deed was just kind of, like, bland. Yeah. And well... She compared has, to the other two, compared yeah. to the other two, I was like, "Oh, this is great!" And like, in ter- <laughs> great in terms of reading it because yeah. you're like, "Holy moly!" Yeah. But with hers, it was just like blunt force. Yeah. yeah, that part of it. But all of the the steps to get to that point, I thought yeah. there was some really clever things in there. There was, there was. But uh, I just, for some reason, I, her story left me feeling, and maybe it was because of the way she felt at the end. Yeah. Like, she, I think she wasn't really happy yeah. with how things ended up for her in the end either. No. So, like, and, yeah, so it was I, unsatisfying. It was. And, like, I kind of thought it was weird how they were, maybe not weird, but it was just, like, um, the detectives thought that it was a man in woman's clothing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe Doria was, like, oh, I kind of wanted that credit a little bit low-key. Maybe. You know? Yeah. She did, but she didn't because she didn't want to go to jail for it, I don't think. Yeah, she I didn't think. want to go to jail for it, but he was he was calling her a pig. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, dang. I thought it was a jerk. Yeah. He really was, like... Oinking at her? Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And so, um, yeah, I don't know if it was just maybe because of the way it ended up for her mm-hmm. that I felt also unsettled by it or whatever she it wasn't a happy ending for her no I no. didn't solve all of her problems and no. so I think maybe that's and not that books always have to have a happy ending but, no but when you see the other two characters kind of like they finish or whatever and then yeah. they get their happy ending and, and they're satisfied and yeah she's just like oh now what yeah <laughs> I know that's the thing that's the thing I think I would struggle with is mm-hmm. like now you've done this now what yeah and now you have to live with that on your conscience looking in the mirror every yeah. single day and presumably so. you've done a good enough job that it won't be traced back to you if you have gone to the school and studied, right? Yeah, if you've done a good enough job at yeah. this school. But then you'd have to be watching your back, like, 24-7. Yeah. I'd never stop thinking about it. I know, like, that's <laughs> the thing. I don't know how, like, I often think about that, how, like, when somebody is killed and their killer is not caught, how is that person living with themselves? Yeah. You know, like, what are they doing? Like, are they just going about their everyday life? Or are they, Yeah. you know, like, what... What are you into that mindset? Yeah, and like, or are they like drinking away their problems or doing drugs because they have this like thing hanging over them, yeah. or or they just carry on like no big deal? I guess that depends on the it depends on the a psychopath or not. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like people who kill more than once. Yeah, 
would probably just yeah they're just like hmm, whatever feeding a desire i guess yeah i don't the, the whole the whole psychological aspect of it really just like boggles my mind yeah it's really intense to look into mm-hmm. that's why i find true crime so interesting mm-hmm. is that like the why behind it yeah and like how does somebody get to that point in the first place like what does it really take to push you into that yeah and how do you live with yourself after that like, exactly i just you know mm-hmm. and then the people who are there like denying it and when it's very clear that they've done it and you're like no it wasn't me it wasn't me and just like go on about like yeah i don't know that part of it just really for sure it's mind-boggling to it me it is yeah and i guess there's like there's people who kill in self-defense too yeah so then that's true i wonder how they think about that too at the mm-hmm. same are they having to remind themselves that mm-hmm. it's self-defense or i wonder how oh yeah, yeah that's a, I know. It's a complex feeling. Or if you're in a car accident and, oh. like, somebody yeah. in the other vehicle dies, I think that's really hard also. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I guess so. And that's not even an intentional thing, right? Like, it's yeah, just an accident. Yeah, accident. Yeah. How, that would... I know. Oh, my... That's just a whole I know. rabbit hole to dive into. I know. <laughs> There's a lot. Like, this book definitely made me think about a lot of things. Yeah. And not just, like... Like, it was kind of funny at parts, and, like, it was very casual about murder Mm -hmm. in some ways. In other ways, it was, like, serious. Like, let's make sure we're doing this for the right reasons, and let's follow the rules and whatever. But but it definitely, like, opened up a lot of different things to think about for me, Mm -hmm. I think. I don't know if you found that when you read it, but... Yeah, it kind of put me in the mind of, like, if I were at this school kind of thing. Yeah. So, like, I... The ethical way of doing so is following <laughs> those rules. But it was I know. just so, like, with how those employers were treating, I don't think I would have gone to that that stage. No, I think I would have just quit and gone and found another job, right? No, maybe with uh, Cliff's boss, because yeah. he was kind of he, was was. endangering a lot of people. Yes. I would have probably, like try to find some petty way to get him fired but, yeah like that's about it yeah well like in the end i think he did take the plans and send them to like the com- competitors yeah. right yeah to kind of expose him yeah but uh like could you not have just done that without killing him yeah could you know was that enough like it's still getting your revenge and he's still getting like would get fired presumably and i guess that opens up one of the inquiries yeah is was there another option he could have taken yeah but also he i think to his treatment of women that's true and he uh, just oh, yeah gosh. <laughs> i know <laughs> he was re- like, he was really bad but i like i don't know and then that makes me think of things like um like capital punishment right yeah like those guys are bad guys mm-hmm. women whatever they're bad people yeah but does that mean that they should also be killed? Right. You know, like, I don't know, it's a lot, of, yeah. a lot of things to think about, right? So, like, this guy was a bad guy, but does that mean he deserves to die? Yeah. I don't... Kind of... Huh. <laughs> that is just... It's so complex. I know. Like, this is what seems like kind of a funny, like, let's look at this in a different way kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Actually, like, there's a lot of other issues underneath to think yeah. about. So... If you're looking for something to make you think about things, <laughs> definitely read it. And there's also, like, a huge twist at the end. Oh, my goodness. Which, I don't know if we should spoil that part or not. I feel like that's that part was, like, I was like, oh, right? I was not expecting that. Are you talking about um, the Dean? Yes. Yes. J- oh, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Also the um the sponsor. Yes. I was so I was like I feel like I almost kind of called it but then Yeah. I didn't really I like there was like a page ahead. I was like what if? And then I turned the next page and, and I was, was like <gasps> and then it was Oh her. my gosh, I just freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I actually had no clue. That never even occurred to me that it would yeah. be her. But I didn't think that it would I thought it would maybe be um one of uh, Fielder's higher ups but oh, okay yeah not yeah. that definitely threw me for a loop <laughs> i know i was thinking like another disgruntled ex-employee yeah or something something like that who kind of knew what was going on and knew the situation and had heard these things and yeah like that was what i thought and yeah. so i never expected an old lady seeking revenge i know right <laughs> <laughs> it was funny and she was so casual about it too yeah. i feel like you know what? No one ever suspects the old ladies. No, it's true. <laughs> you gotta watch out for those old ladies. <laughs> yeah. 
I think I think maybe we should not ruin the surprise about the dean, but Mm-mm. just to leave something because that was. I think Linda said that she wanted to read, so she yeah. did. But um, we'll leave one thing for Linda <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the listeners. Yeah, um, we won't spoil the whole thing, but. <laughs> But yeah, there the ending. There was a few things that came out in the end that yeah. were a little shocking, which was good. I like that. I mm-hmm. like when there's something that I'm not expecting. Yeah, the ending of the second half definitely brought up my opinion of the second half of the book because yeah. it started off so slow. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It was a lot, and it was so much, just so much detail of all their planning for how they were gonna pull all this off. Yeah, and I was like, let's just get to it. <laughs> Can we just, just do the deed? Do we have to like? <laughs> <laughs> whatever i see why it's kind of necessary to see all those parts mm-hmm. and how they all come together but yeah it was a little bit uh a little bit of a slog for a while mm-hmm. um i think did i say last time that this was going to be a series um i don't know if you said it but it is yes yes it says first book in a new series so yes. do you think you would read the rest of the series to be honest i don't think that i would no while it was a good read um I think that's just not like my cup of tea. Okay. I think I don't want. <laughs> this sounds so <laughs> funny. Uh, this sounds so weird. Maybe <laughs> I don't want something so classy and organized. I kind of want to read about. You want just, more chaos? Yeah, I just want to see the chaos. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I want to be on my seat the whole time. <laughs> I just wonder where they're gonna go from here. Yeah. You know, like. Do you have more? I guess they would have more students. I guess. And so is it just going to be more students coming to the school or is it going to be like, and like different teachers? Yeah. Cause I guess the one, the one is a teacher there mm-hmm. now. So would it carry on with her story? Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. And Cliff too, right? He's teaching there too. I think. Oh, is he? Yeah. I, I think, think so. so. I think, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I don't, I'm very curious. Like, I don't know. It wouldn't be one that I would like necessarily once I heard it was coming out, like pre-order it right away and like read it right away. Yeah. But I think I I would be curious to read, or at least find out about it and see yeah. what it's going to be about before I make a final judgment on whether I would read it. For sure. But, uh... Isn't that romantic? Sorry, just a side note. Gemma <laughs> and Cliff yeah. teaching how to murder. Yeah, I know, from right? The, <laughs> the end of eternity. <laughs> Nothing says love like murder. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Um, would you recommend this book? I Do would. Think? Yeah. I think I would because... I know for the people who are definitely into this type of thing, mm-hmm. it'll keep them entertained. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And there are certain people who I've said, like, you really should read this book because it's just different. Yeah. Right? It's not like it's not like your everyday murder mystery mm-hmm. because you know who the killer is. You know who the victim is yeah. going to be. You it, know all of that stuff. So yeah. you think what could possibly happen in this book that would yeah. be surprising? Behind the scenes. Yeah. But surprisingly, <laughs> there are... A lot. A, a few surprises, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of things. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I would recommend it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, not a five-star, but definitely, like, check it out. Oh, yeah. I think. I'd give it a three-and-a-half, four-star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say the same. Do you have any other thoughts or things that came up while you were reading? No, I think okay. we covered it. All right. Well, let's get into some fun facts, mm-hmm. then. So, fun facts today are going to focus on people who actually murdered their employer. <laughs> and there's a lot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm not going to... There was... Um, so, I found a Ranker article titled, Employees Who Killed Their Bosses by Mike Rothschild. Um, and it says, updated September 2023. Um, and they definitely did not take every case off of there. There mm-hmm. was, like, 15 or 20. Oh, my... Yeah. And I oh know me. that there's more than that. I'm sure that there is. <laughs> so, uh We're just going to go continue on with the morbidity, and I'm going to share these stories with you. While plenty of people have idly fantasized about killing their boss, a select few people have actually done it. Whether it's a work-related dispute, a robbery, or revenge for being laid off, employees giving the ultimate bad performance review happens more often than you might think. Most of these cases involve long-held grudges, but a few appear to have been spur of the moment. Here are some cases of employers who killed their bosses and what became of them. So I should also preface this with a trigger warning because I think there are some that are just a little bit violent. I tried violent not to pick like graphic. too much uh, gore and whatever, but there might be a few things there. So just be wary of that. If uh, that's not your thing, just stop now. Yeah. <laughs> Harold Sasko was the 52-year-old owner of a CC's Pizza restaurant franchise in Kansas when he hired 19-year-old Sarah McClinn. 
Knowing she'd recently been in some dangerous situations, he welcomed her to come live with him. She returned the favor by mixing sleeping pills in his beer, binding his hands and feet with zip ties, and sawing his head nearly off. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah. McLean's defense attorneys argued that dissociative identity disorder was to blame, and that McLean had as many as four different personalities. Wait, was this the 50-year-old invited the 19-year-old to come live? Mm-hmm. And the 19-year-old was the... That's kind of weird. Yeah. It's a little sus. That yeah. Age gap is kinda... Right. So you got to wonder what was going on there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So four different personalities, one of whom named Alyssa was the actual killer. Prosecutors claim McLean had researched vulnerable spots on the neck and planned to flee after the killing. She was found guilty of the crime. Yeah. Yeah. That one was kind of gory, but I wow. just thought it was really an interesting story because, like, that seems really, that's like... hardcore. That's hardcore. I really that's a, wonder what happened to drive aggressive. her. I know. Right? And uh, he said knowing she'd been in some dangerous situations. Well, so what, what had she been going through and... What did he do? Like, because that's, yeah, like 52 and 19. Yeah, what are you doing inviting yeah. a 19 year old to your. I know. That's weird. And so, this is just what was in this article. There's probably way more details online. Yeah. I should have yeah. maybe researched it a little more, but. Also, um, prefacing, I'm not saying he deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> just, right. It's still a little, this is right. a little odd part of the story. I know. <laughs> and, like, did he have a wife? Was there other kids in the house? Yeah. Like, I'm, what, I think I might have to go research this and find some more background on this case. Yeah. Because. I mean, that's, yeah, that's really aggressive. <laughs> that's, like, uh, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Houston resident Tyrone Ozine was arrested on charges of shooting his boss at the city's solid waste plant after an argument. Feeling his boss, Michael Vaughn, was picking on him unfairly, Ozine set, is said to have gotten a gun out of his bag and shot Vaughn several times. Oh. When asked outside the courthouse why he did it, Ozine simply said, I'm not doing too well. But it is what it is. Oh, I'm so, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> he was sentenced to 19 years for the killing. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. Right? Like, like, that's the thing. Like, how? Because he made fun. Some guy poked fun at him. Oh, he wow. was picking on him. So that's, I've had enough. I'm going to, like, I know. Like, that that's, goes to say, never bully anyone, no matter your age. Yeah, Don't I know, do it. right? <laughs> and you just never know what is going on in people's minds. Yeah. You just don't. You can't presume to know what people are thinking. Yeah. Or how they're going to react to something or any of that. This, uh, these are clearly cases that tell you that. Yeah. Like, this guy picked on him. Well, what was he picking on him for? And, yeah. like, bosses, I hate to say it, but bosses do that often. Yeah. You know, and... Some bosses do that in showing their weird way of showing their love. <laughs> Some bosses just do it because they're... Because that's just how they They are. have to prove their authority, right? Yeah, like, that too. And, uh, but yeah, I I don't know. I mean, like, we joke around here a lot at our workplace. Yeah. But I don't ever think that anybody is picking on me. Like, no. I know, like, <laughs> well, one time Jess told me I was... I don't remember what was happening. Oh, I was smelling something weird. I was smelling food. Mm -hmm. I was sitting at the desk and I was smelling food. And she was like, are you having a seizure? And I said, no. <laughs> it smells like food. And she's like, walk towards the light, Janine. Walk towards the light. And I was like, what are you trying to say? You know, but I knew she was kidding, right? Yeah. And as it turned out, somebody had thrown some food garbage in the garbage that was right next to me. Oh. And that's why I was smelling food. That person forgot they had put it in there. Oh. And went on to make fun of me also. They were all making uh fun of me because they all thought I was nuts. Because they kept saying, it smells like, like somebody's cooking. Yeah. Like... Like savory food. Yeah. You know, not like delicious, good food, but like something savory that mm -hmm. whatever. But then, yeah, it turns out that there was somebody had left a container of food. They must mm. have been eating in the library yeah. and, and they had thrown it in the garbage and everybody thought I was freaking nuts. <laughs> There's I mean, food here, you guys, I swear. <laughs> do, do I blame them for thinking I'm nuts? Am I a little bit nuts sometimes? Well, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but that's, I'm not going to pull out a gun and shoot somebody. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Like, it all feels like no. I don't think I've ever taken anything personally. It's so extreme. No, that's that's like, crazy. Certain things. Even when I got fired from my job, that was not my first reaction. No, it was like I'm going to kill this person. How dare they fire me? Yeah, no. Like I'm excellent at my job, and anybody would be lucky to have me. And bang, bang. Yeah, you're dead. No, anytime mm. I left a mm, job I did not like, no, that was not. No, what, I was just like on to better things now. Right? <laughs> I know. So that's that's the thing that I just 
yeah. I don't understand it, but mm-hmm. clearly I don't, I'm not built that way, right? <laughs> Thank goodness. <So. laughs> Same. Right? <laughs> Things can get pretty ugly here pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> You think I'm having a seizure and I should walk towards the light? <laughs> bing, bang. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> one last case. Some people who murder their bosses want to take credit for it. Not so much with Hoffman, the 35-year-old pizza delivery man convicted of stabbing, stabbing Pepe's pizza owner, Macris. Whatever Mr. Pete did, I did. Whatever Mr. Pete ate, I ate. Mr. Pete and I were inseparable, Hoffman testified at his trial, adding that he thought of the 72-year-old Baltimore resident as his father. His sentiments were negated by Hoffman's wife, Jennifer, who testified, as part of her own plea bargain, that her husband had murdered Macris during a robbery of which she was an accomplice. He was sentenced in August 2001 to life in prison. So, he tried to... So he was just like, he was my dad. Yeah. But But not saying why? (laughs) No. And like, that was his defense. Like he was, we were inseparable. We were inseparable. So why would you think I would kill him? Right? Oh, okay. Okay. That's the, yeah. Wow. And so his wife said, we made a plea bargain, said that they had, they had murdered him during a robbery. So they, I guess they were trying to rob him. Yeah. Uh, Why do you want to rob your father? Yeah. Also, who robs a 72 year old man? Right. (laughs) Just no heart. I know. <laughs> like, and, and then you got to wonder, like, what was it that provoked it, right? Because it doesn't yeah. really say here. So. I guess th- there's apparently bosses out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I know. If only we knew where our boss was, hey? <laughs> <laughs> that was an evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Anyways, uh, unless you have any other thoughts that you no. want to share, Mm-mm. I think uh, I think we'll wrap it up. Um, definitely check out this book, um, but don't murder your employer. Please you don't, don't. You don't want to go to jail. No, thank you. I've heard it's not very nice there. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been, but... Anyway, uh, thank you, Brittany, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Um, hopefully one day we'll find Jess again, and uh, we'll see you next time. So that's what we thought of the book, but those are just our opinions, and we'd like to hear yours. Leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Books and Banter, and thanks to our editor, Linda. We'll see you next time.